And this is funny, man, because I order my nitro gloves from Amazon um, Prime, right. Amazon right. Prime business. And so I had to order some nitro gloves. And this is the first time I saw this button or action to uh, button on the checkout where it says you can preset a date and an amount where I can re- order these gloves order, every, right. Order, right. 30, every 30, 60 or 90, right. Days. 90 days. Right. Yeah. And, you know, just a couple of months ago, the last time I ordered gloves, that feature was that not there. there. Yeah. But that's just their way of seeping in yeah. uh, automation and AI yeah. where it's more predictive AI. Yeah. So it's just really want to pick up and kind of hone in on your habits, more or less so. And yeah. If this is a repetitive task for you, so if you, if you, you know, depending on how big your business is or whatever type of business you're in, and you're always having to order candles or for me, cleaning supplies, right. well, you can kind of set what supplies you want, depending on the supplier that you use in their website interface. You may have these pre order preset buttons where you can kind of set them and more or less remove yeah. that repetitive task you know um, i mean yeah like i said and forget i mean so like well i wouldn't necessarily say forget because things may change so like for me so, so i may not always have to order i don't know 12 boxes of gloves yeah yeah so, yeah you know yeah. what i mean yeah, but, but i know i always yeah. order right. yeah. medium and large black yeah. gloves yeah. you know what i'm saying so i yeah. may preset those but yeah. i may still have to go in because and if I may, so listen, this is how much I enjoy the human interaction. Right. You know, you can go and do every, all of your transactions literally through the ATM or have right. direct deposit for everything. Right. Some invoices, I like getting a physical check, going inside the branch and interacting with the teller. So, right. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do everything through automation yeah. and, no doubt. and not. You know what I'm saying? So that's how much I, I hate still calling. Enjoy. I hate calling these companies and they put that ro- that robot on that robot you operator. I hate that. <laughs> get somebody live on. But you know, but going back to your other point, uh, I would you know what I was thinking about was, I mean, first and foremost, you know, I don't really you know I'm a God fearing individual. The only thing I fear is God. I don't I don't fear anything. But one thing you know, um, you know, being a little bit you know older in life, you know what I mean. Uh, I've seen a couple a lot of different changes. Um, and just like anything else, I think <clears throat> I think that there will be positive and there'll be some negative. You know, I remember, you know, when, you know, we got rid of vinyl and, you know, them records and then we went to CDs. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> a lot of DJs said, you know, this was going to be the death of the DJ. And you know what? It did kill some DJs, but not but the, not the great ones. You know, not the good ones. You know what I mean? They still they they still found a way and they still were DJing. Um, they, they adapted. Uh, they I adapted. remember some DJs used to, you know, like you said, walk around with the vinyl. Now they got the packs of CDs. That's what I'm saying. You got to adapt. You know, um, you know, when the internet, you know, first came, uh, you know, the internet was scary. You know what I mean? We didn't know what, what was going on. It sounded like we was in Pandora's box a little bit. And the internet today, there's a lot of positive. You know, there's a lot of positive. But there's also negative. I mean, it can be manipulated. Um, we know we've seen it, you know, and I'm sure AI is going to be the same way. It's going to be a lot of positive. It's going to be negative. That you, there's going to there's going to be some manipulation, uh, you know, manipulating the data or manipulating the information, just like the internet. I mean, you know, we've seen you know elections uh, be manipulated through the internet. We see now our our news sources are manipulated. Um, by, you know, by our own interests, but by, you know, by our own algorithms, you know, we've seen how this algorithm can almost be become a negative in our society. I mean, I really truly feel that, that, that the, the internet has created a few wars. I really truly feel that way. Um, and I think it's going to still create a few wars and it's, and it's, and it's created some, um, some discord and some separation and I'm pretty sure AI is going to do the same exact thing. So I think just like anything else, there's going to be positive out of it and there's going to be negative out of it, but it's going to be up to you, the individual, to be able to adapt in this new world and to be able to keep your, you know, keep your, uh, your engine going um, and not, and not, you know, and not be swallowed up by this new technology. Um, and then I also think about um, just the simple fact that it's moving so fast that 
Congress is, you know, they're behind the eight ball. You know, they got to catch up to this information, just like they were behind with the internet. You know, they're behind with this, with the artificial intelligence. So all that's going to play. They, they're right now, exactly. even um, right now, they're uh, coming together to even uh, bring in the heads of all these AI businesses and say, okay. hey, you guys need to uh, hit the brakes a little bit <laughs> yeah. before yeah. you go any further. Um, y'all need to uh, brief us and, you know, we need to be debriefed because if up. anything, uh, we need to catch up to and catch y'all up. might have to put a pause on things. Yeah. So, I mean, like you're saying, and when you brought up algorithms, so that's what it is. It's yeah. AI. Like where it's already integrated. It's already into, integrated. No doubt. Yeah, into everything. Because now it's going to go a step further where now, you know, we have, you know, like I was just um, in California and I saw a little robot machine type thing that was delivering orders it was you know that that was the uh uh the door dash door dash little there you go little there robot go. machine that was the delivering yeah. orders so it's going to happen they in in california they already have um you know some of your uh uh what's it called what's the the, the car share the um the uber Lyft. uber Uber, Lyft, where some of these computers, they've already been testing that for like the last few years that, you know, some of these, uh, some of these automated cars are making deliveries, are making like right. truck and deliveries. Th- think about like uh, yeah. Tesla. It has a self-drive right. function. That's, that's where, right. You know, right. and again, that's not 100% safe because we've seen where people who have put that function on and, and has crashed. That's right. <laughs> you know, like, see, like, I'm like this, like even a GPS that you rely on or people rely on that I rely on to get from point A to point B. That's a form of AI. It's telling you the shortest route to get from A to B. But if I'm driving and the the AI is telling me to go straight and I'm looking at a cliff in front of me, I'm not going to go straight. (laughs) I don't care what the GPS is telling me. So the GPS could be like, hey, idiot, keep going straight. Like just because the AI or the GPS says go straight, but I'm looking at a cliff, I'm yeah. not going to go straight. You know what I'm saying? So I still think human intelligence yeah. has to, you know, be at the foremost um, when we're talking about this AI and I, the AI artificial intelligence is only as good as the human being that's entering the data into the AI because it still has to be programmed. Right. You know, it's no different than, you know, your DNA. You come, you're born with your own DNA. You have your own coding that makes you who you are. Same thing for me. That makes me who I am. Yeah. You know, well, when you're programming these robots and systems per se, you know, that's the DNA, like you're coding it, you're, you're giving it instructions. Yeah. Um, you're programming it. So it's really only as good as, um, you know, the human being that programs it and it has its certain limitations, you know, yeah. but for another example is so um, like military, for example. So like soldiers or drones, you know, yeah. that's a form of AI yeah. where yeah. how many, you know, airmen or pilots may have not been shot down in the last, you know, wars that America has because they use more drones nowadays. That's right. And the drone may get shot down where that may have been someone's son or daughter um, piloting that plane that way may have been shot down. And so, and it, you know. And this is just like that. I think that's where, you know, it, it could help. I mean, you know, listen, um, you know, fires, you know, I'm sure it'll be a lot easier to put a, artificial intelligent robot to go in there to fight that fire <laughs> and forest fire that's right right but, um, <laughs> but right. i just think i just think that that and you know i was telling my daughter you know listen don't worry because at the end of the day i always feel like the human element no matter how t- how tech how technology takes over or how much we implement technology and numbers and data and information the human element always kind of wins out i feel because you can't so- replicate that human emotion that you know you can't you can't replicate we're, we're all we're all uniquely genetically wired and you can't yes. really replace that so i do feel while it's going to be a big part of our society i mean you know that's a a, a great example would be like baseball or sports you know now we understand we know especially baseball right to give a, an example 
baseball is a heavy analytic sport. It's, I mean, it became nothing but analytics the last, you know, 10 years or whatever. But what has happened now? What happened was it became so analytical, it became so analytics that the the, the game became boring. The, I mean, which was already some people already accused baseball of being boring, but I mean it was it was basically a sport that we did not recognize. So what happened now? If you notice, of course, analytics are still a big part of the game, but if you notice, they've begun now to take that information and bring back some more of the human element back into the game. They start. they changed the rules this year in baseball. They did. They right? got the uh, pitching, they got the pitcher's rule the now. Pitchers, like, they took the, you know, now you can't do, you know, now you, because if an analytics said this guy always hits to the left and you shift your whole infield to the left, they don't let you do that anymore because what happens is now you've taken something and you've made it robotic. You know, where now it just looks the same. And that, unfortunately, that is not appealing. That is not as appealing as as just you know playing a regular game so what they did was of course analytics is still big it's still a big part of the game but they've tried to bring back some of the more human elements or just the basic parts of the game to make the game more aesthetically pleasing to us the viewers um you know obviously they're, they're trying to shorten the games up but i think that's a you know a lot of the changes that they did were also some of the some you know are are how is the game is being played because the game was changed because of analytics, information, data, which is really all that we're, you know, really all that we're talking about. And I was telling my daughter, yeah, you're coming in a strike, but I really, really worry because at the end of the day, what's going to probably end up happening, just like most strikes, you're going to end up probably being in a better position. And, you know, you're just going to have to understand how to utilize and leverage this information, you know, for your benefit. But at the end of the day, you know, you can't, you know, they can't, you know, they can't take the human element you know, some of these parts in some of these movies like The Godfather or A Beautiful Mind or these type movies, there's there's certain elements of color purple. Listen, so, hey, 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 so I, I got to say this because you yeah. brought up The Godfather. AI wouldn't have never said a man is not a man unless he does. If he doesn't spend time with his family, he's not a real man. No doubt. That was from The Godfather. You no know doubt. what I'm saying? No no doubt. AI so, wouldn't have wrote that in the script. So that's what I'm saying. There's there's stuff there's, that, there's that, because, and, and so, right. so so because no that's doubt. a human touch. That's right. That's, that's a right. human. That's a human that's feeling. Right. Spending right. time with your family. A, AI right. robot knows nothing about spending that's time right. with the. It's a human family. That's so, right. Yeah, that's I, right. I apologize for uh, the no, interruption. I, you know, there, I think so. You know, I mean, so I think that you know, while it's certainly a lot. But I think it's information I think we all need to start getting abreast of on and start really researching and start trying to, like, like Brother I said, start trying to get ahead of it, man, or stay stay with it so we're not, so when, so we know how to implement it and we don't have to get taught how to implement it, you know, when it's already been sitting here for five years and now you're on, you're, you're just trying to find out how to do it when these people are on, you know, they're on step 10 and you're still on step one, you know. Right. It's going to create a disadvantage, brother. No doubt. Because, you know, whether us as small businesses who are the backbone to business in America, um, the bigger companies are using AI. That's right. So you're going to, if you're in some shape, form, or fashion, you're going to interface with them. So whether it's the big company, a sm smaller company, and then you're dealing with that smaller company, everybody's going to have to change their interaction. So it's like, some, you know, may only accept uh, Excel spreadsheets. Well, what were they accepting before Excel spreadsheets, you know? And then so that was a form of the way you had to change yeah. and adapt into doing business. And it's going to be the same way now. Um, so I just think that, you know, the more that we destigmatize um, AI, deal with the elephant in the room yeah. and just help our listeners the members of the Entrepreneur Chamber podcast, so those who are just starting out in business, yeah. or for that matter, even if you have been in business for some time, you know, yeah, it's, you know, pun intended, the human side of you want you to have some type of uh, trepidation as far as, you know, dealing with AI, but we, these are things that we're going to have to learn to embrace. Right. And that's just another part of business, man. Um, you know, you have to embrace a lot of things that may take you out of your comfort zone, but just dealing with it on the entry level, 
through automation can help you save a lot of time. From my perspective, so that's where I was coming with it. The yep. time versus savings. Um, because at the end of the day, if I could free up time, especially you know, using AI automations with repetitive tasks, then that time can be used for hey, me to right. do something, whether that's at leisure or use yeah. that time to do things that are more um, going to benefit the growth and yeah. the development of my business. Mm -hmm.